So I can see what pretty much happened up until the night that Candace and Monique finally come to blows. From the night of Candace's denim and diamonds or denim and blings party when she invited Sharice, it's been a slow burn for Monique. And once they get to that point, she exploded. Let's talk about what happened on last night's episode of Real Housewives of Potomac. Hey, my beautiful souls, welcome back to another episode. I am your host, your girl, beautiful soul. And we are talking about um, episode seven, I believe, of Real Housewives of Potomac. And we're still at the lake house, at Monique's lake house. And the episode starts with, we're back at the dinner. Last week, they went to dinner, crabs, shrimp, um, sitting alongside a beautiful waterway and they were just you know having some good conversation and then Candace breaks in well first Monique breaks in and asks Ashley how was Michael doing and then that opened up the door to Candace and um, Giselle you know giving each other googly eyes because they you know they got some tea that they um, have on Ashley and her marriage so I just want to mention a side note. If you haven't followed any of the other videos that I have put out, I put out a video last week of Ashley announcing that she is currently pregnant with baby number two and she's due in February 2021. So it's clear Ashley does not have a problem with all of the goings on that Michael's got going on outside of their marriage. Um, she's secure in the bag, whether the prenup says he's got to pay child support or alimony or whatever from up to age 18, um, to 21 and 25, whatever that is, Ashley has secured the bag. So as you know, they get ready, Giselle and, and Candace get ready to break the news to Ashley, Giselle decides right then and there that she doesn't want to tell Ashley at the table, which is, which is a good thing. I did not like the fact that they were going to try to have this conversation in front of the other ladies at this time. So Giselle decides, no, you know, we'll pull Ashley. There's something we want to talk about with you later. We want to plan something. Um, me and Candace and you and we'll get together and we'll talk about it later on. Candace is pretty much thrown off by that. Um, and I'm like, girl, the look that she gave Giselle, I couldn't tell girl, are you upset that Giselle decided not to have this conversation in front of everyone else? Or are you upset that, um, Giselle didn't let you know this was the route that she was going to take? Maybe because you were looking for a big camera moment. Anywho, so the ladies, they're all full. Monique makes sure everybody is full and they've all gotten what they wanted and blah, blah, blah. And they decide to pack it up and head back to the lake house. Um, Monique has decided that, you know, she's going to build a nice fire pit. They're going to make s'mores and they are going to toast up marshmallows. Problem is, is that some of the ladies aren't interested in doing any of that, right? Um, when they get back to the house, they've got to spend this time um, fighting a bug that actually got inside the house, probably was drawn into the house by the lights on the inside of the house. Karen takes off her shoes and kills the bug. As all the other ladies, they're so prim and proper and prissy. They all had to run behind closed doors. Um, Candace is walking around because she knows, you know, there's her and Giselle are pretty soon going to have this conversation 
with um, Ashley and she's, you know, nervous about it because her and Ashley have gotten to a better place and she's sitting on this information. She knows it's going to be devastating to Ashley or she thinks <laughs> it's going to be devastating to Ashley because it absolutely was not devastating to Ashley. But um, the ladies are outside around the fire pit. Monique keeps coming in, interrupting the conversation. Ashley finally comes down from checking on baby Dean. And it's like Monique is lingering and hanging around, um, ear hustling with this conversation, I would say. I think she's a little bit insecure. I think she believes that the three of them are actually talking about her. Um, but, you know, they finally get rid of Monique after a few times Monique coming in and, and hanging around or whatever. She finally leaves. And so they sit Ashley down and they start to have this conversation. Giselle opens up the conversation. She kind of like positions herself as the lead on it. Um, and, you know, as she's trying to explain what it is that happened. You know, she says that Candace got has a friend that was out at the strip club and Michael was at the strip club and she overheard some things. And so, you know, let's just let you read the text messages that Candace got. So Candace gives Ashley the phone. Ashley is reading through the text messages. She's like, what? Strippers? Hotel? What? But there's no real deep-seated anger. There's no real deep-seated show of emotion. Um, she has this dumbfounded smile on her face because, yeah, she's gotten some information that she's not, you know, happy about. And it's sort of embarrassing, you know, because it's other ladies of the group that's bringing it to her. But there's no real sense of devastation of finding out that your husband um, is cheating. <laughs> so I was like, well, that's my proof right there. Ashley, um, she may be upset that he got caught. That's the way I took it. She's upset that he got caught because they have an understanding that, you know, there shouldn't be any of this happening out in public. You need to be doing this discreetly. That's what I took away from it. Um, but she goes on and, and she asked Candace, um, is this source credible? Candace, uh, with a look of concern on her face, you know, basically says, yes, um, the source is credible. Ashley says she's shocked. Um, as far as she knows, everything between her and Michael is good. And it very well may be that everything between you and Michael is good. He's just doing what he does outside of the relationship. She goes on um, to let Giselle and Candace know that, you know, she reads texts, she reads emails and she pretty much sniffs his dirty draws. And and I'm like, girl, if you got to do all of that in this supposed monogamous relationship, and you're standing on monogamy, then you need you don't need to be in this relationship if you have to do all of that. Ashley knows her man is cheating. Ashley knows they have an agreement. And that's that. So um, she goes on to tell a story about how one night him and his buds went out to the strip club and he came home smelling like perfume. And she was she was upset Um and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, she will speak to Michael in regards to this information that has now been dropped in her lap. Giselle goes on to, you know, assure her that this conversation will stay between them. Um, the other ladies don't need to know about it. And um, that's that. <laughs> um, Ashley lets us know that she believes that this time around, Candace's intentions were good in as far as her concern for Ashley and this marriage. We're back at the fire pit. The ladies are, are chopping it up. They got the fire going. Monique is so proud of her fire. 
um, Robin and Giselle come out and they decide that they're going to turn in. Ashley then decides that she's also going to turn in. And of course, Monique is 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 feeling kind of sad because, you know, she planned this for all of them to enjoy and she's feeling slighted and she's probably feeling a little bit more like um, some information was shared and now they're feeling a way towards her. You know, Giselle and Ashley are feeling a way towards her. But later on that night in the kitchen, uh, it's Wendy, Karen, Candace, and I miss oh, Monique. And they're in the kitchen and they're just taking shots. Um, and they're, they've got a little CBD going on. Karen is drunk as a skunk. So much so, the grand dame is slurring her words. She gets to talking about her marriage and she let us know how th that tax predicament that Ray found himself in. She put up half of her funding to help him out of that tax predicament. And I'm like, well, Karen, that's what wives do. <laughs> I'm like, girl, I, I, OK, you know, she said in the past she just would have been out. I guess she's trying to um Get us to understand and express her love for Ray, given the supposed current problems that they are having in their marriage, which I don't believe for a long shot. But yeah, she lets us know that she put up half of her money to help Ray out of that predicament. And I'm like, girl, I'm, I'm not giving you an award for that. That's what wives do. If they have it, and they husband need it, they give it to the husband and vice versa. So, but she, you know, she's having a drunk moment. Um, she gets to talking to, to Candace and Monique about their current friendship and letting them know that she's praying that um, the two of them can work it out. Candace is like, you know, I don't want to have any real deep conversation. Candace doesn't want to have conversation about it at all, which is why it's festering so deeply in, with Monique. The two of them have yet to have a conversation where Candace can express and where Monique can express. Monique right now, she believes that Candace was doing some, some messy, shady foolishness when it comes to inviting Sharice to her party after knowing what Sharice did in, in spreading the nasty rumors about Monique's marriage. And Candace is lying saying she didn't know that it went that deep for them to. So Monique has yet to be able to express herself to Candace. Candace doesn't want to have the conversation Therefore, these feelings are festering and building within Monique. It's the next day. Giselle's up early. She's leaving. Remember, she has to go back to that. She has to go back to New York. Well, she has to go to New York because there um, she's up. She's nominated for an award. Um, Ashley calls baby daddy, but she can't get through to baby daddy because the Wi-Fi or whatever, the FaceTime, whatever it is, the data is off. Um, the husbands start to arrive. Chris is the first to arrive. Monique is in the kitchen with T'Challa, not in a cage. Yuck. Uh, at this point, I believe T'Challa has just as many scenes as Monique. So I'm like, he needs to be Monique's co-star and y'all need to give him a glass <laughs> because he's definitely a part of the cast at this moment. Anywho, so... We find out that Juan's not coming. He's got a, a game that he has to coach, so he won't be coming. But, you know, everybody's congregating in the kitchen. They're getting breakfast done, having breakfast and things like that. And um, basically, Monique is, is letting it be known that she has a problem with the sidebar conversation that took place between Candace, Giselle, and Ashley. Um the night before she's feeling a certain kind of way about it. She's feeling that it was rude. You know, she's planned everything down to the T and um, she didn't plan for them to have a sidebar conversation. And so Ashley steps up and, and explains to the other ladies what the conversation was about. And Monique 
has a problem with the fact that they are still, um, you know, basically interfering in Ashley and Michael's relationship. And, and, you know, Monique, this is a sore subject for, for Monique because what they tried to do to her, they basically tried to destroy Monique's marriage, Sharice, and, and all of the ladies who got together with Sharice. That would be Giselle. That would be Robin. Um, Mon um, Karen was there, but Karen was the one that picked up the phone and called Monique and told Monique what the hell was going on. Um, so, you know, they were all a part of, of this scandal to um, spread this information that Sharice was putting out there, be a part of the information, uh, misinformation that Sharice was putting out there about Monique and her trainer, which, of course, got back to Chris and caused problems for her and Chris. So this is interfering in somebody else's relationship with these types of rumor is a sore subject for Monique and being that this information is coming from Candace, who was a part of the foolishness with Sharice, who um, also Monique is feeling a certain kind of way about Candace inviting Sharice to the party in which Candace knows that Monique has a problem with Sharice and why child. So it's, it's a sore subject for her. She, she basically steps up and says, you know, she's pretty much tired of people attacking people's marriages. You know, she's like, didn't we already have this situation last season? Why are we doing this again this season? Well, Monique, Mo the situation is that Michael is doing it again this season. And so if we are going to be bringing drama to the, to this show and Michael doesn't care enough to be discreet about what it is that he's doing. Hey, it's going to be brought to the show. It was all in the blogs. I understand what you're going through Monique, but yeah, girl, whatever. <laughs> so, um, you know, she stresses that and, and, you know, Candace realizes that she's, in a way, talking about Candace messing up and being, you know, being a part of rumors that could mess up someone's marriage. The husbands start to arrive. Um, Wendy, the, all of the ladies are, are kind of like huddled together and she's attempting to spill tea on Karen and how she got drunk the night before and the conversation that she brought forth. Um, once all the guys get there, they pretty much separate themselves for the, from the ladies. You know, Chris is like, let's just let them do whatever it is that they do. And Monique pretty much goes in at this point. <laughs> she's, like, she's still upset about all of the ladies leaving from this fire pit that she, you know, was a part of her agenda. You know, remember Ashley turned in, Giselle turned in and Candace turned in. And so, you know, I think the conversation opened up with Karen saying, oh, you know, um, Karen and Wendy were saying that, you know, they love the fire pit and they're not thinking about getting a fire pit for their backyard. And so this opens the door up for Monique to say, well, you know, this is why, you know, I plan things and blah, blah, blah. And Candace is like rolling her eyes up at the sky. But Monique opens up and lets them know that she's upset about the whole situation. And, and Candace um, earlier had apologized to Monique for um, ruining the, you know, the plans that she had. Um, and so it, do, it doesn't matter to Monique that she apologized. I told you there's this slow burn and this is just another log added onto the fire. Um, so Monique and Candace, they pretty much um, start to go back and forth. Karen gets up and leaves. Candace, at that point, she gets up and leaves. She says she does not want to argue. She does not want to do this. So she gets up and leaves. And so Monique is talking 
to uh, Robin and uh, Wendy and Monique is going on and on and on about it. I'm like, girl, it really is not that serious. And Wendy keeps pointing out one very important fact as she's having this conversation with them. Wendy's like, but she apologized. She apologized. She apologized. She apologized. And Monique is, is just not hearing it at all. No, this, this is a slow burn. Um, if you're not coming with water to appease Monique at this moment, the, the fire is not going out. It's just going to burn stronger. You know what I'm saying? And so Robin basically says, girl, this really isn't a battle for you to be putting your energy into. And I'm like, girl, Monique, Robin is right. This really is not a battle. I mean, if they decided to go to bed early, hey, knock yourself out. Enjoy the, the company that's there with you. That's it. That's all. Why this... I'm not, I'm not going to ask why this got under her skin so deeply. She's projecting um, the issue that she has with Monique. I'm sorry, with what Monique has with Candace. Um, this isn't the real issue, but she's using this issue to get at Candace, to argue with Candace. Instead of the two of them sitting down and having a conversation about the issue. We get a flash over in New York. We see Giselle um, accepting her award. She won. She won the literary award for her book. Congratulations to Giselle. We're back at the house. Ray's the last to arrive. Um, the men are in the house having a conversation about vasect vasectomies. Monique wants Chris to get a vasectomy. Um, Wendy's husband is talking about um, getting a vasectomy. And they're talking about nothing and moving on um candace is up in the room she's done with monique she can't do it anymore she's packing up she can't wait to leave um she basically tells us um in the confessionals that she's done she will never step foot in uh monique's home again and i'm like girl don't feel bad because i don't think you'll ever get an invite into monique's home again um chris goes outside he's got some goodies um, for Monique, you know, he's got a birthday cake. He's got some flowers. He's got some f balloons and all of the guys go out to help um, Chris bring this stuff in. And as they come in, they're singing happy birthday. And she is just all in her glory. Just all smiles. She loves it. She loves it. Uh, Monique loves to be the center of attention. I can tell she loves to be the center of attention. Um, and she's very much controlling everything. If, if she's in charge of something, she wants everything to go A, B, C, D, E. There is no room. There's no room for A and a half or B and a half. There's no room for that. A, B, C, D. That's it. That's all. And if it doesn't go that way, then she's very, very unhappy. She's all excited that Chris has put a shining spotlight on her with all of the little with all of the little birthday goodies that he surprised her with. Karen pulls Ray to the side. They go into the room. She's not feeling well. She's feeling a little dizzy. Well, yeah, Karen, after all of the shots that you took the night before, mm -hmm, you ain't no spring chicken. I know you'd like to say you could keep up with the, with the younger ladies, but girl, you ain't no spring chicken. <laughs> you ain't no spring chicken. And so, you know, they're all dinner served. They're all fixing their plates. They're sitting down at the table and we get to learn a little bit more about Wendy and how her and her husband met. Um, they've known each other for years back in high school. And, um, you know, so that love grew. They eventually got engaged. They eventually got married. We find out that his mom does not care for her. But the reason why his mom does not care for her is because his mom really doesn't like her mom. And it's all in regards to the tribe. Um, Wendy's mom is chiefess of the tribe and um, his mom is not. And so she's, I don't know if she's feeling inadequate or she feels that she doesn't match the greatness. I don't know, but any of my um, my African people can get down in the comments and shed some light on um, why 
Wendy, uh, his mom is having a problem with Wendy's mom and her title and, and, and her position in the tribe, please get down in the comments and, and, and educate me on this. I, I just don't understand it. But um, when they were going to, when they, Wendy and her husband decided to get married, his mom basically went to people in his family and basically said, you know, if you go to the wedding, then we disown you. We don't want to have anything else to do with you. They didn't even go to the wedding and then denounce other people who went to the wedding. That's real deep. That's some real deep stuff right there. Real deep. Now, this is your son. And so um, Wendy, they asked Wendy if she would ever forgive. And she was like, she doesn't know or think that she could ever forgive because, you know, he was so hurt by it. She was the one that was there, you know, consoling him and wiping his tears. Um, he doesn't even know if the doors open for them to kind of like have a family reconciliation. It's real deep. It's real deep. So before they all decide to go their separate ways, they decide to play a game. And the game is that they have to imitate their wives. And so, you know, all of the other husbands were were pretty much easy going. But Chris gets up with this weird, awkward in, um, imitation of Monique. And he's down on his knees holding this this wine bottle and depicting Monique giving him fellatio. I just thought that was weird. I was like, is Chris getting any at all? He seems to be sexually repressed um, because that's all that seems to be on his mind. You know, even, you know, when Monique brings to him how she's feeling about certain situations with the marriage, he's like, do what you need to do. As long as when I want to get some, it's there for me to get it. You know, and I'm like, oh. It, it just that whole that whole thing to me, it was it was inappropriate. It it just did not being that all of the other guys were so easy. Go lucky with their imitations of their wives for him to go there. It was just like way out in left field. It was awkward. So everyone is now packing up and they're getting ready to leave. Ashley, she can't wait to get home to address um, the issues that she needs to address with Michael. Um Monique is exhausted. She's laid out on the couch. Uh, she eventually falls asleep on the couch or she pretends to fall asleep on the couch just as Candace and her husband was getting ready to walk out the door. So if she's asleep, then she can't say goodbye or dress Candace in any kind of way. Chris basically says, um, y'all going to work. Y'all going to work this out. And Candace is like, nope, I doubt it. They leave, but I was tickled. I was like, Monique, girl, <laughs> you ain't sleep. Get up. <laughs> so now we've got this real dramatic 24 hours later. Everybody's left the white, um, the lake house. There is 24 hours later and the ish hits the fan about what really went down with Michael at this nightclub. Giselle's getting pictures, DMs um, of Michael uh, doing whatever it is that he was doing in the hotel. We saw all of this play out in the blogs, the videos that were um, put out there in the blogs, um, the pictures that were put out there in the blog. It was actually gossip in the city that broke the story. But y'all know I don't follow gossip in the city. That's that. That's that blog site that posted that video of Nipsey Hussle. In his last moments of life, I've, I've told this story several times um, in the past, but I've never put the name of the blog out there. Gossip in the City is that blog. She's ruthless. Um, she no scruples whatsoever. Um, if it's a story, she wants to be the first to put it out there. No care in the world about family members, no care in the world about how traumatizing it's going to be to um, family members, fans, those, that type of thing. Um, I don't support her or her blog. Now, I stopped following her back when she did the whole Nipsey Hustle thing. She refused to take it down until the people who actually followed her were down in the comments 
telling her she needs to take this down. And when I say the last minutes, this man, the last minutes of his life, flipping all around on the ground, the paramedics had stripped him down to his boxes. It was terrible and it was traumatizing for me and a whole bunch of other people. And the people collectively got down in the comments and it was only then that she decided to take the video down. Stop following her from that point, never followed her again. Um, but she was the one to um, get dibs on the story about Michael. She was the one that broke the story. Give credit where credit is due, but eventually I saw all of the videos without having to follow her. <laughs> so, we got to see some of the clips of the pictures, him standing in the hotel room in his boxers. They showed clips of the videos um, of him in the in the club and, um, you know, sitting one on one, having conversation with this lady. You know, he told Mike, he told Ashley in a, a previous conversation that, you know, this woman was being extra flirty with him and he was all over her and this and all over him and this and that. Well, those videos don't match up to what he told Ashley. And so, you know, we see the ladies, they've all got something to say. You know, they're pretty much blaming Michael. He needs to be more discreet. He needs to think about his family. You know, Robin's like, I think it was Robin. Oh, no, it was Monique who was saying the person that I feel most sorry for is baby Dean. And I concur. And that was the end of the episode. It was an OK episode, but I got to really see how we ended up um, where Monique ended up dragging Candace. It's been a slow burn and it's going to continue to burn until we get to that point where all it takes is a nudge and Monique explodes. Y'all get down in the comments. Y'all let me know your thoughts on, on the episode. Let me know, um, any of my African people who follow me, let me know why this thing is so deep between the two moms, you know, Wendy's mom being chiefest of the pride of the of the tribe and why his mom is feeling a way about that. All right, y'all, I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to Beautiful Soul Speaks. Make sure you subscribe and rate the episode wherever you get your podcasts. To stay connected, you can follow Beautiful Soul on Twitter and Instagram, as well as on YouTube.